Hi, first graders. Today we're going to be working on lesson 13-4. And today our goal is to use reasoning to tell and write time. Let's take a look at our solve and share question. Noelle has a music lesson at 3.30. At 4.30, he goes to the library. He gets ready at 5 o'clock so he can have dinner at 5.30. After dinner ends at six o'clock, he plays a game. How can you organize this information in a schedule? If you look at the green chart on our page, they're giving us a hint about organizing the information in a schedule. They're showing us to include the time along the side and the activity in the second part of our schedule. Let's take a look at two examples of an afternoon schedule to match our story. If you look at the first schedule, this student has put the times along the first side, 3.30, 4.30, 5.00, 5.30, and 6.00, as well as the matching activity, music lesson, library, get ready, dinner, and play a game. If you look at the second schedule, the student has also included the time, 6 o'clock, 5.30, 4.30, 5 o'clock, and 3.30. And they've also included the activity, play a game, dinner, library, get ready, and music lesson. Both students made sure that the matching activity went with the matching time to match the story. However, if you were trying to follow these schedules, which one would be easiest to follow? Which would you choose to follow? As I looked at the schedules, I noticed that the first schedule was easier to follow because the times went in order from earliest to latest. So as I was following the schedule, I can work through from top to bottom, checking off things as I go. I could follow the second schedule. However, it would be a little bit more tricky because the times here are not listed in order. So I would have to keep searching after each activity to find the time that comes next. So when you're thinking about your schedule, Think about putting the times in order from earliest to latest. Let's take a look at our visual learning. Mr. Diaz starts to read a story halfway between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. What time does Mr. Diaz start the story? Show the hands on the clock. What do we need to find out? What did the problem ask us to solve? We need to find out what time Mr. Diaz starts reading the story. What activities are shown on this schedule? What do the times show? The schedule shows reading, math, recess, art, and lunch. It also shows the time that each activity starts.
Mr. Diaz starts to read a story halfway between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. What does halfway mean? It means that the story is read right in the middle, between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. Between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. How many minutes are between eight o'clock and nine o'clock? If a full hour passes from eight to nine, how many minutes is that? Think back to our earlier lessons. What is one hour? How many minutes? If we want halfway, how many minutes would that be? Let's try it. Select an activity to show the time on the clock. So reading starts at eight o'clock. Math starts at nine o'clock. If Mr. Diaz starts to read a story halfway between eight o'clock and nine o'clock, where would that be? Just like we practice in our lesson, halfway means that the minute hand would be on the six. You can see that the hour hand has moved between eight and nine. What time does this clock show? What do we say when the minute hand is on the six? There is one hour between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. One hour is the same as 60 minutes. So how do we know that there are 30 minutes and a half hour? There are 30 minutes in a half hour because 30 minutes is half of 60 minutes halfway around the clock. What time is 30 minutes after eight o'clock? Eight thirty is 30 minutes after eight o'clock. That means 8.30 is halfway between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And we can see that our clock shows 8.30. Remember, when the minute hand is on the 6, we say something 30. If we look at the table, we can check to see if our answer makes sense. The table shows that reading starts at eight o'clock and math starts at nine o'clock. So if we think about 8.30, that comes between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. Reading would still be happening when Mr. Diaz reads the story. And now we know how to use reasoning when we want to solve a problem about time. Let's take a look now and try a couple together. If we look at our chart at the top of our page in the purple schedule box, 
we want to know for our Do You Understand box, what happens one hour after art begins? Well, if I find art on the schedule, that's at 1030. And if I follow down, the next time I see is 1130. 1130 is one hour after. And if I follow across to the activity, I see that lunch has begun. Remember, if we're looking for a time that comes after, we want to move forward on the clock or we want to move down in our schedule. So after 10.30 would be 11.30, so we know that they're having lunch. Now let's take a look at numbers one and two. It says, use Mr. Diaz's class schedule above, which is in this purple chart, to answer the questions. Circle the activity that starts at the time shown and explain your reasoning. Well, on number one, I see that they're showing me a round clock. So first, I have to figure out what time the clock shows. And if I were to write this for a digital time, I would look first at my shorthand, which points to the eight. So I know the hour is eight. Okay. And the long hand, the minute hand, is on the 12. So I know it's something o'clock, and I know I use my numbers zero, zero when it's something o'clock. And if I look up at my chart and find the matching time, I can see that the first row matches the time I just wrote. So I know that they're going to be doing reading at eight o'clock. In number two, they've already written the digital time for me. I know the first part tells me the hour, 10. The second part tells me the minutes. I read this time as 10. 30. And if I move up to the schedule and find the matching time at 10.30, I see that the children will be participating in art. So we can use a schedule to help us find which activity is happening at a given time. Now it's your turn to try. You're going to work through thinking about a nature trip schedule that the class takes together and deciding which activities are happening on their class trip at what time. And then you're going to work through on a family trip. Okay, The family visits the city and they take different times to visit different places throughout the city and go on different tours. And we're going to use this orange chart to help us answer numbers seven and eight. So now it's your time to practice using your schedule. Remember, if they're asking us for a time that comes before, we're going backwards on our chart. If they're asking for a time that comes later, we move forward on our chart. Hope you enjoy practicing telling time and thinking about these fun trips. And I'll see you again soon. And we'll have more help as we go along this week for math. Have a great day.